What's going on everyone? My name is Austin Hongos and welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be reviewing the Logitech Pro for iPad Air, the brand new one. I've been using this product for about two weeks now. There's so much to talk about here. It generally feels like a very futuristic and future-proof product. I want to talk about the build quality, the functionality, and what makes this product just about right for anybody, not only because of its price point, but because it brings that laptop tablet hybrid just a bit closer. Let's talk about the build quality because it's the outer exterior that gets noticed at first. Once you place this case onto your iPad Air, it'll turn into an iPad brick. A lot of the weight comes from the weight of the keyboard, which has a nice mesh feeling soft material, which I'm not too big of a fan of, but it just feels nice and sturdy. Aside from plastic that surrounds the iPad, it generally feels very cheap and flimsy. If you accidentally grace it on a sharp object, you know that it's going to be able to be cut through. Where the USB-C cable lies, there's a lot of material surrounding that cord. So if you plan on sticking a dongle in there, you kind of have to test your luck to make sure that it fits in there or else you'll find yourself in a weird situation where you have to take off the case in order to plug in a USB-C dongle, which kind of defeats the purpose of the case. But I wouldn't suggest holding the iPad in portrait mode for too long because you're definitely going to get some sort of carpal tunnel if you hold the iPad with the case with one hand for more than about like 10 minutes. Just kind of continuing on with the material because it's such a huge part of the case. While it's nice and aesthetically pleasing, um, it's just not for me, Chief. As I was placing my iPad around the house and just moving along my day I noticed that there was a little bit of water on the tables and the material would just absorb that in a few months I know that this case is going to start to smell I would have much rather preferred seeing a black and white option and a cheaper harder plastic with a cut down price as opposed to getting something really fancy like this because now I feel like I have to worry about both the case and the iPad Air when I bought the case so I wouldn't have to worry about either. There was a moment where I was very blown away by the attention to detail that Logitech introduced into the keyboard, especially when I was going from a more landscape to a portrait mode and had to hold my iPad in a more traditional phone style. There was never accidental keyboard stroke hits. There was never an accidental tap of the backspace or refresh. It was just really great to see that someone actually thought this through and also so many ways to position the case you know there's theater mode there's drawing mode being able to switch between different styles in general it makes the ipad just a lot more fun to work with as the case kind of adds on to what we already love from a tablet experience. The flap where the Apple Pencil lives is nice, sturdy. They put in a very heavy magnet onto here, so I know I'll never lose my Apple Pencil. It is a little bit annoying though, when a lot of the weight is on the keyboard. If you accidentally open it too fast and you just let it slam, you have to gently open the case to make sure one, you're not disturbing other people. Two, to make sure that your keyboard stays intact and doesn't break over time. Moving on a bit of detail though you have to download an application in order to get the firmware updates it's a little annoying especially if you have a 64 gigabyte version just know that you're going to need to download an app to get the most out of this keyboard the battery life though is excellent i saw little to no difference in my battery life from my ipad air as the keyboard drains battery from the ipad air to get through its day a plus on the battery life going out to the exterior and the function row this was a huge reason that i purchased the logitech over the magic plus it's half the price right the function keys are what i use every single time it's dimming the keyboard up and down searches through ipad skipping songs which is still not very well integrated that might just be more on apple side the only function key that is a little bit weird and kind of a giant workaround is the lock key. It makes sense to me when you're locking the iPad Air. When you're unlocking it, it now becomes a two-step system. A little redundant and annoying, but I'm just picking it as detail right now. The keyboard experience is excellent. You can type on this all day, bring in a mouse, and it becomes a nice work-from-home setup. I actually don't like when companies jam the up and down arrow button into like one mold. This keyboard does that. That's just my own personal preference. I feel like the canvas has enough space to give the up and down arrow its own dedicated keys. Talking about the trackpad though, with the newer iPad OS versions, they give you a nice little dot in order to see where your cursor is at. I used to not be a fan of big trackpads, but after using my MacBook Pro for a long time, I actually prefer 
larger track pads. This one, it's relatively small. I find that a lot of the times my fingers are fighting for space. If there is a bigger version of this for the iPad Pro, I feel like it would just be a much better experience. There were a few issues that I found while using the trackpad. There was a moment where iPad OS didn't recognize it and it kind of just froze over. The only thing that fixed it was turning the iPad off and then back on. There's still limitations when it comes to iPad. Clearly to get the most out of this experience, you want to use the keyboard constantly, but because the operating system is not optimized in certain ways, like for example, Instagram and Clubhouse don't have a dedicated landscape mode. You're kind of debating with yourself whether you want to use it in a more traditional computer sense or hold it like a giant iPhone. Also, sometimes the up and down arrows on certain applications that do have landscape don't recognize it. The best example is YouTube. I'll find a search, try to scroll down with the down key. It doesn't recognize it, so I have to just use my finger. It's not all apps that do this. Some have already recognized the down key, so I feel like it's just gonna start to pick up more and more as people get more keyboards with their iPad to replace their traditional computer. Wrapping this up, putting it in a nice magnetic folio case. This is an excellent case for those people that work in offices and are just looking to travel to and from their work and work in a relatively clean area. College students that are looking to, you know, just get a much cheaper computer and don't mind the work around or certain applications. For me though, that material is gonna start to smell in a few months as I'm someone that kind of just throws their iPad everywhere. And the main reason I got the iPad was so that I wouldn't have to worry about throwing it everywhere like I do with my main workhorse computer. If you're someone in that mindset, then you might want to reconsider maybe buying a cheaper folio case that you don't have to worry too much about because this is a lot of technology, which, you know, is well thought out, future proof, and has all the bells and whistles at a much lower price than the Apple official one. $160, quite a bit. If you're the person that I mentioned, then I think it's a great investment in general. Does anyone actually own this thing for more than six months and can tell me if it smells after a while with all the water being soaked in? I'm genuinely curious. Is, are you an iPad user looking for a great keyboard experience? Because I think this is a great option. At the end of the day, I thank you so much for your time and your attention. My name is Oxy Hongos, and I'll catch you in the next one.